This is the third lecture in a series of lectures covering first order systems and their solutions. So in the second lecture we just solved our first um, our first first order system, uh, the system being a uh, constant voltage driven RC uh, series connected circuit. So we found that uh, in this circuit, which I will redraw here, uh, the solution, the complete solution of the capacitor voltage Vc of t when Vs was equal to 10 volts a constant and we had an initial condition of Vc at time zero of V sub naught. The complete solution was found to be, uh, let's see, Vs plus Vo minus Vs times e to the minus t over tau. Uh, valid for t greater than or equal to zero and where tau is equal to RC. Okay. Now we can identify the two components of this response. This is the steady state steady state or particular or forced. Okay. This term here is the transient response. Okay, now let's plot what this might look like. Let's think about a case where VO is not zero. So if Vs was 10 volts, let's say here's 10 volts, and let's say that VO was actually equal to 17 volts right here, not zero. So initially, uh, at time zero, we're going to have a VCT uh, will evaluate to uh, to 17 volts, right? Because we'll have Vs plus Vo minus Vs, or just Vo. Asymptotically, as the exponential e to the minus t over tau decays to zero, the, uh, the, the transient response will go away and will settle out at Vs. So we'll have a response that will look like this. Okay? And we had seen before if Vo was equal to zero, it would start from zero and, and head up. Right? But the rate at which it moves from one state to the steady state is the same regardless of... Um, it's supposed, these are supposed to be the same, I didn't draw it too well. But regardless of what VO is, whether it's 17 volts or 0 volts or any other voltage. Okay. Now there's another way to uh, split up the response, the complete response. We can write it in a slightly different form. Okay. We can collect all the terms that involve Vs. All right. So we have Vs times 1 minus e to the minus t over tau. All right. And then we'll Put the rest of, of what's what's left, and that's going to be V O times E to the minus T over tau. This is for T greater than or equal to zero. Same expression as above, just reformatted. And here we have we can uh, we call these two terms different names than steady state and transient. So the first one is called the zero state response. Okay, zero state. What that means is that at the the time zero, the state of the system is zero. Okay, so the initial state of the system is a zero. In other words, i.e., Vc at time zero is equal to zero. Okay, this right here is actually the zero state response. Okay, that's that term. And the second term is called the zero input response. Okay, and the reason for that is you notice there is no input term here. There is no Vs, right? No Vs present. Okay, this term is due only to only due to initial energy initial energy in the cap. Okay.
So it would look like something like this. Okay, so this guy here is the zero input response. But when you add those two together, you'll actually get the complete response. So it's just a different way of splitting it up. These are some terms you should be uh, familiar with. One of the usefulnesses of splitting up as a zero state and a zero input response is suppose that you were given the, uh, the zero state response. So you're told, okay, the initial condition is zero, and here's what the total, the complete response is. You could then come along if you were to um, be asked, well, what is the complete response if the system doesn't start from zero but starts from some other voltage V0? Right? Then you could just add in this second term, which is very simple in form. All it is is it has a, it has a weight or an amplitude of VO, the initial voltage, and then it has this exponential decay, e to the minus t over tau. So um, that's one of the usefulnesses of, of having the system response described in a zero state plus a zero input response. The usefulness of splitting up the complete response into steady state and transient is that sometimes all you're interested in is actually the steady state. You don't care about how it got to the final value. You just want to know what the final value is. And at that, in, in that case, you can discard all of the, uh, the, all the information that tells you how it got there. You just want the final value. Let's finish this uh, lecture out by working another problem. Okay, and we'll do a slightly different problem than what we've looked at before. Let's have a voltage source still Vs. And we'll have a uh, resistor, but instead I'm going to put an inductor here instead of a capacitor. So we'll have R and L. And we're going to say that the response is IL of T. That's what we want to find. We'll say that Vs is equal to 10 volts as before, and uh, R is equal to, uh, let's say, 1 kilo ohm, and we'll assume that tau is equal to um, 0.1 seconds. Okay. So uh, what we need to do is we need to write the differential equation, the state equation, and then we're going to find the solution for it. So, um, what we can do is we'll write, uh, we recall that for the inductor we have VL is equal to L DIL DT. Right? So we can write DIL DT uh, is equal, L DI DT is equal to, all right, VL now, which is going to be polar in this polarity here will be equal to Vs, I could strict, I could do KVL, but I can just see this by inspection, that it's going to be Vs minus R times IL that flows through that resistance. Okay. So now if I divide by R on both sides, I'm going to get L over R DIL DT equal to Vs over R minus IL. And lastly, I can write this as tau DIL DT minus, I'm sorry, plus, plus IL is equal to VS over R. Okay. You might be puzzled by the R that's over on the right side. Why is it VS over R? We didn't see that before. But if you think of the units here, uh, on the left side we have amps, right? We have current. And so on the right side, we need to have amps as well. And sure enough, voltage over resistance is amps. So this is, this is all good. If you go back to the first lecture, I did a parallel uh, circuit for, uh, for the, this, the circuit that used an inductor. It was a parallel current source resistor and, and inductor. Okay, here I'm using a voltage source, and it's in a series circuit. Now, this form is exactly the same as uh, the form of the uh, RC circuit, okay? So we're going to find, uh, so we, we should be able to find the complete solution pretty easily. So we'll have IL of P, the particular solution. Let's take a guess at what that would be. Well, uh, we're forcing the system with the, con with the uh, 
uh, a constant, right? The forcing is Vs over R, which is going to be 10 volts over 1K or 10 milliamps. So I'm going to guess that IL of P, the particular solution, is some constant. We'll call it uh, IP, right? And we're going to try that. So when you try that, you're going to find, you can plug it in, you'll find that IL of P is equal to Vs over R. Okay, that's the particular solution. And uh, we can verify that if you think about it. Um, when the current settles out, once it's finished, you know, ramping up or finding its final value, and it settles at that final value, then the DIL dt will be zero, right? The time rate of change of current will be zero. So if DIL dt is equal to zero, then the voltage across the inductor, VL, is going to be zero. And if the voltage across the inductor is equal to zero, then all of Vs is applied across R, and the current that flows in this loop is simply Vs over R, precisely what we have found it to be right here. Okay, now let's find IL of H. <clears throat> We're going to try, so we'll say we tried this, we'll try Oops. We'll try some current A times E to the minus T over tau. Okay. And if you plug that in, we will find that, uh, again, oops, sorry, take that. It'll be E to the minus S, E to the ST. If you plug that in, let's just go ahead and do it since I've kind of boogered this. We'll have tau times the derivative of IL of, uh, ILH of T is going to be S times A E to the ST plus A E to the ST is equal to zero. Remember, we're solving the homogeneous equation. This results in tau times S plus one times A E to the ST is equal to zero. So therefore, we will use we will uh, choose S to be equal to minus 1 over tau. So therefore, we can write the complete solution IL of T as being equal to Vs over R plus A e to the minus, minus T over tau, where tau is equal to L over R. Now, if we have an initial current, let's assume that IL at time 0 is equal to IO. Okay? That's the initial condition. So, satisfy initial condition. IL at time zero is equal to IO, and that is equal to VS over R plus A times E to the zero. <clears throat> so this leads to A being equal to IO minus VS over R. So finally, we can write the complete solution. IL of T is equal to Vs over R plus the quantity IO minus Vs over R times E to the minus T over tau. And this is valid for T greater than 0, greater than or equal to 0, and tau is equal to L over R. And notice, this is precisely the same form as what we had when we solved our RC circuit. Okay, so if I plot this versus time, uh, we will have a steady state solution that will be equal to Vs over R, and depending where on where IO is, let's say that IO was up here, then we'll have an exponential decay like this, and if IO was down at zero, then it would come up like this, okay? And the steady state value is going to be 10 milliamps, okay? And tau here is equal to 0.1 seconds. <clears throat>